for joining me on this first episode. Mm. Thanks for joining me on this first episode of Artist Talk. Today we're talking about one of my personal favorites, and I'm sure a lot of yours as well. He's seen as the godfather of color photography and a pioneer to the format, Mr. William Eggleston. William was influenced by a lot of other great historical street photographers, such as Henry Cartier Bresson, Robert Frank, and Walker Evans, all of which will be discussed in upcoming videos in the future. When you think of film photography and where it's at today, you gotta realize that we would have never been able to get where we are without the work and influence of Eggleston. His work encapsulates everyday life, and for many, when they view his work, they think of the term simple. However, it's exactly that simplicity that Eggleston was looking to make beautiful. He once stated when referring to his work, all the work from 1983 to 1986 was unified by the democracy. Friends would ask what I was doing, and I would tell them that I was working on a project with several thousand prints. They would laugh when I would be dead serious. I'm afraid that there are more people than I can imagine who can go no further than appreciating a picture that is a rectangle with an object in the middle of it which they can identify. They don't care what is around the object as long as nothing interferes with the object itself, right in the center. They want something obvious. I am at war with the obvious. Eggleston challenged the conventional means of photography. In the 1960s, conventional photography was predominantly black and white. That's because the dye transfer process was seen beneath serious photographers. A lot of commercials and ads were shot on color photography, and for the time being, serious photographers mostly only shot in black and white. However, the reason why Eggleston's work is so beautifully saturated with color is precisely because of that dye process. Eggleston's work is characterized by its ordinary subject matter. Eudora Wetley noted in her introduction of one of Eggleston's books, The Democratic Forest, that an Eggleston photograph might include old tires, Dr. Pepper machines, discarded air conditioners, vending machines, empty and dirty Coca-Cola bottles, torn posters, power poles and power wires, street barricades, one-way signs, detour signs, no parking signs, parking meters, and palm trees crowding the same curb. These are all relatively mundane things whenever we glimpse over them on a day-to-day -day basis. However, whether we notice them or not is really all about the human existence. We all end up seeing these things eventually. It's the work of Eggleston that brings these mundane things to life, to the forefront of our attention, and allows us to live in the moment that we skip through so often. So what can we learn as upcoming artists about Eggleston's work? What are some key takeaways? I'll start with a quote from Eggleston in an interview he did with the New York Times. When discussing Eggleston's compositional strategies and the impact they've had on academia, he stated that photography is second nature to him. Intuitive, not analytical. He says, I know they're there. The angles and compositions, he says. Every little minute thing works with every other one there. All these images are composed. They're little paintings to me. This can tell us that Eggleston has complete mastery over his eye for photographs. He doesn't overthink his shots and allows his perspective of the human condition and art history to take over. We can use this to our advantage by learning that we have to be shooting with the same intent. We are not mathematicians or engineers. We do not calculate and analyze the unknown. We create identities and perceive the obvious and well-known into something more than that. We are artists meant to divulge into the very being of the subject matter. We're meant to question the who, what, when, where, why, and how in a visual and subjective manner. We can only do that through personal ideologies and experiences. That's why it's so important for us to understand the urgency in finding our own voice as an artist. In lesson one of my past video of crafting a photograph, we discussed intent and its power to lead storytelling. Eggleston is so successful with his work because of his mastery of intent. In the same interview, he goes on to talk about his work in more detail, describing his process and how he goes about taking images. One of the better questions is, what makes Eggleston not decide to take an image? With which William replies, that doesn't happen. When he raises the camera to his eye, it's because he's going to take a picture and the picture is going to work, the end. He either takes one photograph of his subject or no photographs of it. There's never a moment of internal consideration or indecision, there's only certainty which explains why he has no favorites. He states, each one to me is equal, or I didn't take it to begin with. I never think about it beforehand. When I get there, something happens, and in a split second, the picture emerges. Now, while I think that that's a very nice idea, and I'm sure we all wish we could be this way, I believe that not even Eggleston is perfect. Nobody can shoot 100 for 100 of the shots and not miss a single one. 
Even the best ball players strike out every once in a while. However, what we can take away from this lesson is that we should not let our indecision cause us to miss opportunities. As street photographers, it's important to remember the decisive moment. And yes, sometimes that decisive moment means not clicking the shutter. With that being said though, it's undeniable and an undisputed fact that Eggleston sees the world in a much different way than the other photographers of his generation. What he accomplished was revolutionary for his era and he became a legend for it, as he should. We're lucky to be able to study such an amazing and successful artist. Below will be the links to all of my sources if you wanna check out more on some of the interviews that I looked at, as well as a few of his photo books that are available for purchase. Thank you all so much for joining me on the first episode of Artist Talk. Tomorrow, we'll be doing a Q&A, so I'll hop on over to my Instagram, at Jared Tapey, and fill out the Q&A and ask away. You can check out my Instagram, TikTok, and website all down below, and don't forget to pick yourself up some of my prints that are available on my website. Thanks for watching, everybody. I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Now get out there and get shooting.